Hello everybody, welcome back to Movement Monastery. This is Francesco Caban and today we are talking about the sissy squat. What is the sissy squat? I will show you right now. Ta-da! Okay, so a sissy squat is essentially locking off your hips and hinging at the knees and tracking your entire body in line with your knees the whole time. So it's a very difficult quad based movement and it's really useful for developing your quads and kind of bulletproofing your knees. But most people get into it before they're ready to do it and it's, uh, it, can, it can be a little bit hard for most people to actually even attempt this move because most people are not ready for it. So I'm gonna show you some progressions you can do to help build up your resiliency of your knees and your quads so eventually you might be able to do this. And you can use it for all kinds of things like back bends. It's really just a way to prevent injury in your knees, but it can also cause injury if you are not careful about how you do this. And I've had to go through several times, had to uh, build the strength up for this move, so I have a couple of ways of doing that. Anyway, let's get to the tutorial. The first thing, in my opinion, that you should be doing to develop the sissy squat is first make sure that you can actually hold just a squat by itself for an extended period of time. So you should be able to hold either an isometric lunge for about a minute and a half or a uh, 90 degree angle lunge for a minute and a half. So an isometric lunge would be one leg forward, one leg back, and you're holding this position like this because this puts this quad back here under intense load because of the angle you're at. So you wanna be able to hold that position there on both sides for an extended, for an extended period of time. This side, right? I recommend being able to hold it for at least a minute, minute 30 would be good, but trying to maintain that position. The other one would be just a squat hold, just like that, right? Now, these don't in any way intensify what your quads have to go through compared to what the sissy squat does, but they're great ways to start with the preparation. The other thing is you wanna make sure that as you extend and straighten your leg, you don't feel anything in there that's causing any pinching pain. The funny thing is that this movement was actually prescribed to me to help reactivate my quads because I had some issues going on in that area during some painful movements. So it was something that was prescribed to me by uh, MAT people, muscle activation technique work. So anyway, just so you know, it can be useful in that way, but I'm not the person to prescribe it. I'm just telling you what has worked for me. So you wanna have your isometric lunges and your squat hold. The next thing you wanna focus on is being able to do a full bend of the knee. So coming down to a full bend of the knee from this position, right? So I wanna have the ability to go from uh, just all the way down, butt to heels as best you can, right? And you should be able to be in a pain-free position right here. Now in this position, what you wanna do is you wanna put your hands behind you and hinge your hips forward into this position. Right, so from here I'm really loading up my quads and then my hips right now are relaxed, my hands are behind me. And what you wanna do from here is push your hips open and really squeeze your butt as tight as you can. And that's gonna put all the weight into the quads because now you have your hips extending upward. That's the first position you should really be working on as far as developing the strength there. You wanna hold maybe five seconds at a time, 10 seconds at a time until you can build up a good amount of time there, right? So again, Hands behind you, push your hips forward, and then squeeze your butt and lift yourself up. So now you feel all the weight going into the quads, and then you come back to here. So that alone is gonna put a lot of intensity into that area, and you gotta take it slow. So if you start feeling like your quads are getting shaky, you're probably going too hard, and you have to back off in the amount of time that you're on. The second he starts getting too shaky, that's when things get a little bit iffy, right? So really, really, really take this as slow as you can. Don't be in a rush for this skill. It will happen with time. Give yourself like three months, six months to get good at this thing, all right, as far as all the way through the progressions. Next, isometric. There are three ways actually to develop this. You can either have something behind you, you can have something in front of you, or you can have something beside you, or even on top of you, all right? Any way like that, you wanna have something there to assist you as you go through the positions. I'm gonna go ahead and grab something to emulate that. All right, so behind me I have a panel mat and I have a wall over here that I'm gonna use in a second and I have this door jam over here that I'm gonna use in a second. Now, you don't have to use a panel mat, you can use a chair if you want to behind you, 
but I'm gonna use this because it's the easiest one to kind of demonstrate with. So the first thing you wanna think about doing is you're going to rise up on your toes. So you want your heels to come up, so you feel the weight in the ball of the foot. And then from there, you're going to squeeze your butt as tight as you can, pushing hips forward. Then we're gonna work on just hinging with our hands behind us. We're gonna try and let our knees come forward and we're gonna balance. Our hips always stay over our ankles. We're gonna reach back and then we're gonna try and tap and then come back up again. Okay, squeeze tight, reach back, find the balance, come back up. All the time trying to maintain squeezing your butt and you can even put one hand forward. You can put both your hands forward if you want to, to assist you with your balance, right? But it's always good to have one arm back so you can kind of have that tapping position so that you know where you are. You can reverse this actually, have this right in front of you, same thing, rise up on your toes so your heels are off the ground, butt is squeezing tight, and then you're going to crack forward, tap the knees, and come back up again. And then you move a little bit farther away, you repeat that process, same thing. So from here, my heels are up, squeezing my butt tight, and then I track the knees forward, I tap, I come back up, and I repeat this as I get lower and lower, right here, squeezing, and just a few inches away makes a huge difference in your leverage. So take this one slow as well. You can have the same result with a wall in front of you, just get a little bit further away from the wall, tap forward, knees tap, tap forward, knees tap. You never wanna to get to the point where you come down and then you suddenly collapse. That means you've trained, that means you've gone too far as far as what your body can handle. So you have that as far as working the eccentric downward and coming back up, and then you also have that bottom position where you're holding the deep, 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 deep uh, knee bend and you're pushing your hips forward, right? The next thing is trying to develop the position between, between when it really starts to get hard and that bottom position. So in order to do that, we're gonna use a door jam. Okay, so you can see right here I have this partition, okay, and when I said door jam, I meant partition. But you have this partition here and you can use it to hold on to with your hands to give you a little bit of um, help on the way back up. You can also use some TRX bands, some rings, a rope, anything you want really. Um, but for the main th idea is that you wanna have some, take some assistance with the arms. What you're going to do is you have to make sure that, uh, this is a little tricky with where you put your hands, but you walk forward a little bit, you go through the process again, you're gonna rise up on your toes, squeeze your butt super tight, and then as your hands, you're gonna put your hands on the wall and you're going to track forward, squeezing tight, getting as low as possible, using the hands to help you, and then come back up again. And you can actually just work the eccentric, the low ring, if you can't get back up again, so you can get the full range all the way down. Example of that would be rising up, squeezing tight, and I'm lowering, 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 all the way to the bottom. Okay, so you can do that to kind of build up that resilience over time. Uh, and repetitions, three repetitions, four, five. Try to go five seconds lowering, 10 seconds lowering until you're able to start to stop in those positions. When that starts to get easier, you can start to go to one arm. So I'll put one arm here, figure out my position of where I wanna be here. A little bit behind, I think feels good. Heels up, squeeze my butt tight. From here, I'm gonna start to hinge. And then when I get down to the bottom here, I'm gonna use the wall to help pull me back up again. So you wanna keep your hand a little bit higher on the wall so that it can assist you on the way back up again. You don't wanna keep letting it come down with you, otherwise it won't help you at all, right? Let's go again, hands up a little bit higher, rise up on my toes, squeeze my hips tight, start tracking forward. I wanna feel the balance as much as I can. And then when I get to the bottom there, I use my top hand to help push me back up to the top. Make sure you train both sides, so that way you're not always leaning into one leg more than the other. So as you start to get better at that, right, and you start to have less shakes along with doing this uh, skill, then you wanna start to incorporate other parts of this, right? Now you can actually do this with your feet turned out a little bit, you can do it with your feet turned in a little bit, but for the most part, most people will have a great benefit just going straight forward with it and keeping the hips tight, loading up the quads. I recommend doing this at the end of leg training or have it be the only leg training you do in any set because if you do this before leg training, you're setting yourself up for disaster. So please, please, please listen to me when I say this. Don't do these particular exercises prior to like heavy strength leg work. If you're already really good at these things, okay, then yeah, okay, use them. Use them for a warm up, okay? But if you're not, this is not something you wanna do prior to doing heavy leg work. It just taxes your quads too much 
and it could result in disaster for you, okay? Once you have your good eccentrics, now you're gonna do pauses on the way down. So you have your hand up high, I'm gonna use this side this time, and every, like let's say 20 degrees or so, say 25, 30 degrees, I'm going to stop and I'm gonna pause. So from here, I'm lowering down and I pause here. One, two, three, four, five, a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five, a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five, all the way. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna use two assistants here to come back up. Now I'm starting to get tired. That pause there is gonna really overload that area and help you get more control over those ranges. Now, once you start getting really good at this, you can have a couple of challenges for yourself. One of them would just be doing a freestanding eccentric, freestanding lowering, where you come down and touch your heels. So you're gonna try and touch your heels with your hands, or you can even touch the floor with your hands. So I'm starting to get tired, but let's see if I can still do this right now. So my heels are up, squeezing my glutes tight, my hands are behind me, and I'm gonna come down, come down, slow, slow, and back up again. Not too bad, quads are starting to get, starting to get shaky. All right, but I was able to touch my heels from there. Another option would be trying to come down, touch the floor behind me. I can even, hand one hand, even have one hand to the front to kind of counterbalance me a little bit. That's okay too. Okay, so from here, heels are up, glutes are tight, and I'm gonna reach back, I'm gonna keep my balance, keep my balance, keep my balance, hips are tight, coming back up all the way to the top, right? Those are some great challenges for yourself until you're able to go all the way down, all the way back up. Like I said, this is gonna really help build up um, your knee extension as far as, your as far as your ability to control your quadriceps. Now make sure you subscribe because in the next video regarding calisthenics, we're gonna go over hamstring curls and how those can be so useful to you and the different types of ways to progress in strength for that. I'm also gonna show you a little trick on how to make a glute ham raise machine on your own, very, very low budget and super, super useful and beneficial. So that's all I got for you today. So that's all I got for you today. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this. Uh, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know the kind of content you wanna see more of. I hope to see you all later. Y'all have a great day.